In this chapter, we're going to explore hardscape settings. We will look at how to configure both the main joint patterns, border, 3D representation, as well as tag and other data options. To begin though, let's take a look at this hardscape and how it's configured. Notice that this is a fairly basic hardscape. It just has a simple flagstone joint pattern. This pattern is applied through the hardscape settings. As with all objects in Vectorworks, the first place you want to look to edit or modify its settings is the object info palette, so we'll start there. Taking a look in the object info palette, we see several editable options, ranging from general options, tag settings, 3D settings, and then other information. To see all the available settings though, we will need to go into the hardscape settings using this button in the object info palette. In the hardscape's object settings dialog, we can adjust tag, joint pattern, configuration, border, and 3D settings. Under definition, let's jump right to the joint pattern options. We'll take a look at the name, tag, and class options in a moment. After clicking on the joint pattern drop-down menu, we see a list of pattern options. The first few options, flagstone, pavers grid, and pavers running, all generate a pattern based off of size and angle settings. Flagstone creates a pattern style of flagstone. Pavers grid will create a simple grid pattern. Pavers running will create a nice even offset with a running bond pattern. The last two paver options, pavers radial, and Paver's Curved Path use different controls. The Paver's Radial option can only be used with a boundary hardscape configuration. This option will not work with a pathway configuration. In the Set Radial Pattern Options dialog, we have various controls for the pattern. The Core Spacing controls the distance between the concentric curves. This is essentially the length of the pavers. Here, we can set the center stone diameter. Then we have the setting for the next course joint offset. Here we can choose how to determine the offset between each radial course. This can be set by width, angle, or shift percentage. Finally, the pavered width can be set by the outside or inside paver width, or by specifying a set number of pavers for each radial course. The Paver's Curved Path option can only be used with a pathway hardscape configuration. An error dialog will appear if you try to apply this option to a boundary hardscape. In the Set Curved Path Pattern Options dialog, we can adjust the pattern's options. First, we can set the paver width. This is the width going perpendicular to the path. Next, we can set the paver length and randomization. The length is measured along the path and is the maximum length of a paver. If the randomize option is enabled, the paver length will be varied. If the paver length is 200 millimeters, for example, and the randomize percent is set to 50, the pavers will range from 100 millimeters to 200 millimeters in size. The last option sets the course join offset. This can be set by width or by shift percentage. The first five joint patterns all generate a pattern based off of specific options. The next pattern options apply a pre-configured attribute to the hardscape. These can be hatches, stipples, or tiles. Hatches and tiles are fairly similar to the paver options with a few differences. Hatches can have more complex line patterns. These can include patterns that resemble crushed stone, dog bone and fish scale, as well as more complex patterns from manufacturer libraries. Tiles, though similar to hatches, tend to be more vibrant and have a higher level of detail. There are several libraries to choose from, or a custom tile can be created through the resource manager. Stipples are good for generating a material effect on the hardscape. Stipples create a random pattern of different shaped objects. This type of attribute can be fairly complex, though. Now let's go back and take a look at the other options under definition. To start, we can give this hardscape a name. This will be useful later when creating a hardscape report. It will allow us to easily distinguish between different hardscape types and estimate cost of materials. There are also tag options available. We can set the tag display, style, and class. The tag display can be set to right, left, floating, or none. 
The tag style can be set to show only the name, the name in the area, or the name area and perimeter. The visibility of the tag can be controlled using an assigned class. There are also class options for the slope arrow and main area. The tag line marker can be enabled or disabled using this checkbox, as well as turning on or off the edge snapping of the tag. Below the definition settings, we can choose the hardscape configuration. We have discussed the two configuration options, boundary and pathway, in a previous chapter. In this section, if the pathway is enabled, we set the width and offset values for the path. In the top right of the dialog, we can enable the border and adjust its settings. The first setting adjusts the width of the border. Next, we can choose a separate joint pattern for the border. The joint pattern options include space joints, hatch, stipple, and tile. Space joints have an adjustable joint spacing value. A background color can be set for just the border, and the border can be classed separately from the main joint pattern. Finally, if a pathway configuration is selected, there are options to choose which borders are displayed. For example, for a typical pathway, the start and end borders will be disabled. The last section in the Hardscape Settings dialog controls the 3D representation of the hardscape. The first option sets the 3D type. This can be set to None, creating a 2D-only object, Slab, which creates a basic 3D object with an independent thickness for the main area and the border. The last three options create different types of site modifiers. We will discuss site modifiers in more detail in another chapter, Please refer to the site model chapters to better understand site models and site modifiers. Site modifiers can change the elevation of a site model, limit the effect of other site modifiers, or apply attributes to an area of a site model. The first two modifier options set the position of a pad relative to the top or bottom of the hardscape. These options also generate a 3D slab representation for the hardscape. The last modifier option, Texture Bed, applies a texture within the area of the hardscape on a site model. No 3D geometry is generated when using this option. Attributes for the 3D representation of the hardscape come from the main border and border texture options in the Draw 3D section. Since 3D objects require a texture attribute, the main and border joint patterns cannot be used. These textures can be set directly or by class. Many of the settings found in this dialog can be quickly accessed directly through the object info palette as well. There are also a few options and some information only available in the object info palette itself. For example, there are options to set the main unit and border unit prices, as well as price codes in the object info palette. This information can be used for costing when displayed in a hardscape report. We will discuss the creation of reports in a later chapter. The Object Info Palette also displays various information about the selected hardscape object. The main, border, and footprint area and perimeter are displayed for quick reference. Also, if the hardscape is on a site model, specific site data is displayed. This includes projected area, service area for both the existing and proposed model, existing and proposed volume, as well as cut and fill data. We're going to cover the site model data in more detail in another chapter. Now that we've learned how to configure a hardscape, let's take a look at how to save and apply a predefined hardscape style. In the Creating Hardscapes chapter, we briefly discussed the first option of the hardscape tool in the toolbar. This option allows for the selection of a hardscape style. There are multiple libraries of predefined hardscape styles to choose from. It is also possible to save your own hardscape style. Once a hardscape is configured, it can be saved and used later for creating new hardscapes. To save a hardscape style, just select the configured hardscape and click the Save Hardscape button in the Object Info Palette. The hardscape will be saved in this file's resources and can be accessed through the Resource Manager. These can also be added to a favorite file for easy access later. With an understanding of these various hardscape settings, you can create various different configurations for your needs.